In this short video I'll talk about Infection Free Zone, a game that I patiently await since I first heard about it one year or so ago. It's in early access open beta so I won't get too much into little bugs, meaning I'll paint my experience with broad strokes. Choose any real region from the world, choose your base of operations then rebuild and readapt the buildings around you to create a self-sustaining settlement. Take charge of a group of survivors from your city and when the night falls defend the zone from the infected. Ah, I love this kind of games and in a way it scratches my they are billions each, even if they are not exactly the same type of game. Without further ado, let's start with the good. I along with most of you I think like a good post-apocalyptic base building zombie survival game with the entire world as the playground. Yes, you heard it right, you can choose to start in any spot on the planet. You can just search for a city or even a street if you want to play this in your hometown for example. It's very dark and atmospheric. I like how you constantly need to balance who does what within your base and the constant desperate search for resources just to scrape enough stuff to survive the next night. I like the random events that trigger when you pass by. The game difficulty is pretty hard, even with the default settings that set the game to medium. I also like the day-night cycle. The last thing on this list and every map you start on presents different challenges. Some have small buildings making your expansion wide and harder to defend while others have bigger buildings that require more resources to develop and maintain. We'll be ready. And now, let's go with the bed. I somewhat dislike the fact that you don't have good variation of buildings, weapons and the game doesn't tell you you shouldn't accept everyone in your base because they will soon eat all your food then everyone just starves to death. And now to expand what I said about the buildings. The world could use more work, depending on the studio size that's working on this title for sure. In order to make things believable, even during the apocalypse, you need more concrete and asphalt on the ground. It's not everything covered in dirt, you know. And we need more houses mixed in our towns. I had the start on the street I live in real life and the entire area was full with apartment buildings. But whatever, this is perhaps not a realistic expectation, so it's a nitpick of mine. The world is also devoid of color, making the game look pretty average. I expect more in 2024 even from a small studio like this. Boss, it's been a rough night. Something must have made the infected extremely bloodthirsty. The events are repetitive, making the game less replayable. During my third playthrough it became clear that the events are the same, with no variation, no matter what part of the world I started in. I'd like at least a set of events for every population density zone or I don't know how to put this. If I start the game in a big town I expect different events than if I start my game in some rural area. A big part of the game difficulty comes from bugs and the clunkiness of the systems that are not fully fleshed out yet or are poorly implemented. For example, if you have multiple things queued up for building, you better pray your people will start with the structure you want to build first or you do them one by one. The weapon variety is pretty poor. I'm just sick of pistols, man. I got no shotguns or sniper rifles yet and the default squads you can make come equipped with machetes. I'd like the option to select bows when I recruit them, for some resources of course. Also, SMGs, LMGs, RPGs, grenade launchers, grenades, etc. The weapons pool is lackluster and the ones I put here are the bare minimum in my opinion. The pickup truck should be able to transport two squads. The rotation and building placement is clunky and makes building defenses and structures harder than it needs to be. Chief, did you hear that? There must oh, now the ugly. I absolutely hate the intrusive transmissions you get constantly. These in my humble opinion just destroy the immersion and the flow, pausing or slowing the game all the time. And they not only disrupt the flow of the game but prevent you from seeing any other details. Basically you can't do shit while those are playing. 
Please make it so you can still at least play the game while you have an incoming transmission. And most incoming transmissions are not doing anything really. You could make it so you can skip the entire thing with a single click. Note, I said skip, not fast forward. I want to be able to skip straight to the answer. I also dislike to the core the wood dependency when doing anything in this game. It's an easy resource to get, sure, but when you deconstruct a building, for example, you start with the wood, then metal, then bricks, as it makes sense. The annoying part is when you realize you are done with the wood and you only gather metal and bricks from that building, from that point. It should be possible to prioritize stuff like this. Like saying up front, scrap that building of wood or stop all other activities and go cut me some trees. Because the scavenger category encompasses everything with no real possibility to prioritize stuff. You can just increase the scavenger number in hopes they go cut some trees, but they usually don't. So yeah. These two things combined kill the game for me at this point. I'm not even talking about bugs here by the way, because I expect bugs in this early stage of a game. The, the most notable and annoying bug I got was the weapon equipping on gates and towers. At times you can have plenty of weapons in your HQ. The towers still say no resources, pistol or whatever else you pick. And it's infuriating. And the time passes way too fast. After the first couple of days you can't go scavenge shit on some playthroughs because everything is too far apart. And the day passes way too fast. When you scavenge during the night, your squad can easily die to a swarm. So you can't realistically scavenge during the night most of the time and your unarmed workers are not allowed outside for obvious reasons, making the window of preparing and building for the night way too short. I hate the length of the day in this game, so please make it so we set it in the new game options. But now, my conclusions. I'll not trade this title as it's early access and this wasn't a proper review. I'll just say it needs some more work, more customization options for squads and bases, more weapons, more diverse loot, vehicle options and so on. It's on the right track though, as it nails quite a few important things for me at least. If you're not willing to put up with a product that's still early in its development, follow it and maybe you pull the trigger later when it's more fleshed out. I'll go continue my iRacing series now. In the meantime, take a look at this scam series if you would like to try a more, I don't know, hands-on experience during the apocalypse. Thank you all for watching, take care and until next time, see ya.